so much the chairpersons and thank you to dr banshi and the entire organizing committee of dia care con um so yes i am someone who is living with type 1 diabetes and i've been living with type 1 diabetes for 13 years now and today i'm going to be sharing about looping do it yourself artificial pancreas system it is a system that i am personally using right now and um, i'm going to share a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the diy loop system so life with type 1 diabetes i always say is not easy uh, you know there are pricks and shots and highs and lows and ups and downs and often what happens as people living with type 1 we need to fit our life into the type 1 diabetes time time uh, timetable and schedule but what would be that's the current scenario right we need to fit our life to match type 1 diabetes what if we had a system that made type 1 diabetes fit into our lifestyle and that is made possible and prevalent with the diy aps which is the do it yourself artificial pancreas system which i believe is the future of type 1 diabetes management so little history about myself i was diagnosed in 2009 and i began on the mdi treatment the you know the the injections and stuff like that then i went on to a pump but still i had fluctuating sugars i also then got on to a cgm but i still had fluctuating sugars because my body had different insulin requirements for different times of the day which my pump and my cgm just could not keep up with so that's what the diy system sort of changes so the components of a normal diy system you need four things you need a cgm which is your continuous glucose monitor for real time glucose values you require an insulin pump um you require a smartphone and the smartphone becomes your host it becomes your controller to control your pump and finally you require a hardware a third party frequency device which makes the pump and the cgm talk to each other so in effect in very layman's terms if i have to put it a diy aps is basically hacking into your pump and cgm making them talk to get a talk to each other and making your life much much better so how does the system work this system makes recommendations and takes action to adjust insulin delivery based on numbers and models now this is very important because um, i know that you all must be thinking in a pump also you can have different basal requirements for different times of the day that's true but it does not communicate with the cgm so when you are dropping you know your insulin is not suspending when your sugars are rising your temporary basal is not changing and that is what the diy system does it is constantly making decisions for you just like a normal pancreas would to adjust your insulin to ensure that your sugar stay in range So there are two modes of this DIY loop system. One is called an open loop, and one is called a closed loop. I am currently on a closed loop system. But what the open loop is basically for people who are a little bit um, hesitant to try this. An open loop is basically it will make the decisions, but it will ask you before actually implying, before actually executing them. So if it says, okay, I need to change your basal from 1.2 to 1.4, instead of doing it, it will give you a notification that this is what the loop wants to do. Do you want to accept? so it gives you like a little bit of a practice run a warm up session so to say so you can get comfortable and used to the fact that it is a safe system and then you can move on to the closed loop very honestly i never used the open loop i trusted it immediately and it worked well for me but the closed loop basically the system takes over you still have to manually bolus but the basal rates will change based on your model your current readings and the algorithm so it's truly do it yourself and the options are a lot but they come with varied complexities so there are three options currently available the fourth one has just come out it's called free aps which i'm still going to be trying out but there's open aps uh, which basically runs on a small rig uh, which you need to create so you need to make that raspberry pi little rig of yours one is called android aps which works for android phones and devices and the one that i am on is currently loop which is an apple only framework um and the algorithm runs on your iphone it works with legacy medtronic pumps omnipod eros which is the one i'm using and it can also work with dexcom cgm or medtronic or a uh, libre with a third party transmitter uh, but it requires a third party device called a riley link which is your radio frequency device so a little bit i'm not going to get too much into these details i'll be happy to answer questions if required but the open aps systems um you know you require all these things to do it i'm going to talk a little bit about loop because that's what i'm on this is android aps um it uses the ops uh, algorithm for this as well 
But the one I am on is on the loop. It is an implementation of LoopKit, which is available on GitHub. And um, to set up Loop, you require an Apple computer, you require an iPhone, and you require Riley Link, CGM, and stuff like that. So what inputs does the user have to put in? So we need to set in these different um, system settings to make it start working. So I need to put in my ISF, which is my incident sensitivity factor. I need to feed in my ICR, my suspend threshold, which means under what level do I want it to start suspending? Override settings, which means that for certain activities like flying, for example, I, if I take a 16 hour flight, I know I tend to run low on flights. So I would do a flight setting which would change my entire target range. Insulin model. So are you using rapid acting? Are you using human insulin? What insulin model are you using? And finally, your target range, which is also customizable. So my target range in the night is slightly higher than my target range in the day. So it's so DIY that you can tweak very, very minute details. And then once you feed in all this data, it's ready to go. And that is when I truly say the magic of looping begins. And the basal rates modify constantly based on the predictive CGM values, the algorithm, your ISF, your ICR, and it's truly, truly magic. And I'll show you how it's magic. So this is what a visual representation of the entire system looks like. There was a pointer somewhere. I don't know how to use this. Oh yeah, okay. So that is the CGM, that is the pump, that device over there is the Riley link, which is the radio frequency device, and then you have your phone, which is your controller. Now, one thing is that all these components need to be in the same vicinity, because the Riley link has a distance of 15 feet. So out of range, it will not work. You won't be able to bolus, you won't be able to change anything, nothing. So the only drawback is your entire APS system needs to be in a close vicinity. This is what my dashboard looks like. So as you can see in this insulin delivery, every maybe three minutes, the temporary basal is changing. That is just not possible on a pump and that is just not possible on MDI. Every few minutes based on my values, the temporary basal is changing. When it says zero, that means it's suspended. So I probably was running high, it gave me some more insulin, now it's coming low, so it suspended it, again made it high, suspended. It's just absolute magic. This is what the dashboard looks like. So the dotted line, the dotted ones over here, they are the values that it's taken from my CGM. The dashed lines are the predicted values. So based on how much this is your insulin, active insulin, IOB, based on your IOB, based on your ISF, it will calculate where your sugar is going to go. So if you see this over here, it says eventually 84, which means that with currently insulin on board, with current met metrics, your sugar will eventually be 84, and that's why it's taken the decision. Green loop means everything is working. Sometimes we get a red loop, which is not fun. That is my pod life, and that is what my current basal is. So right now, plus zero, zero means the suspend. It's been suspended. The impact. Quality of life, of course. I used to be someone who used to get so many hypos in the night. So better sleep and decreased nocturnal hypos. Reduced hypos, even sensitive, like the, uh, the severity of my hypos have reduced. Um, redu I don't like this word at all, but the burden of diabetes has truly been reduced because now type 1 diabetes is fitting into my timetable. And I'll give you an example of this. I used to use a pump before, but my basal rate from 8 in the morning used to become 1.5 units an hour. In the night, it used to be 0.6 units an hour. Now, let's say one day I want to sleep in late. I want to wake up at 12. I am sure, sure going to get a hypo because my basal would be increasing at 8 o'clock. Now, let's say with the loop, I want to sleep in even if I, my basal rate is still changing at 8 a.m., but it will notice that, okay, my sugars are dropping, it will suspend my insulin, so I will not get a hypo. So it's truly fitting into my lifestyle. This is a small image of what my graph used to look like pre-looping. This is, I used to be a little bit time in range, but I used to be somewhere all over the place also. Uh, there's no such thing as a perfect diabetic, so this used to be my normal day. But post-looping the system, this is what my graphs look like. And these are taken on random days at random times. Mostly completely flat line, time and range, reduced hypos, reduced hypers. Of course, not every day looks like this. I'm still a diabetic, but most of the days I'm pretty good. I love this picture because this is the graph shot I took on the day I began looping. So around 11 o'clock over here, over here, I began, this is 12 a.m., 11 p.m. I set up my loop and immediately it got into action and you can see how quickly the effect takes place. 
So a bit about the pros and cons. The pros, like I say, it's a tech marvel. You can bolus from your phone and your watch. So if you have an Apple Watch integrated, I can actually just bolus from my iWatch. I don't need to even go to my phone. Time and range override settings adapts rapidly since it's not FDA approved yet. There's constantly upgrades. So the way you upgrade your iPhone software, you upgrade your Loop software as well. It's by the patient. So there's such a user centric design in place because it's by people who are living with this condition. Uh, the cons, of course, DIY means uh, it, you can't go and download it from the app store. You have to code this app in. So I used Xcode to actually build this app. Uh, it's not FDA approved yet. It's not a cure. So it's not like once I have loop, I forget that I'm diabetic. No. Tech trouble at times, of course, like anything with tech. Red loop at times, but and there's no helpline. There's no only social media. You can't call customer care if something goes wrong. So the nuts and bolts. Uh, if people want to start looping, this is the advice I give them. What can you get your hands on? That's the most important thing. If you want to get an Omnipod and you can't procure it, don't go in for the loop option. Try an Android APS, which works with Met uh, Medtronic legacy pumps. How much customization do you fancy? Do you want a system that is tr like customizable to the T? Then I would suggest an Android APS. But if you want something that is customizable, but also easy, I would suggest the loop. Understand the safety. There's no FDA approval yet. There are a few safety concerns. You could get severe hypo, so understand that. Understand form, function, and interaction, and do your research. There's plenty of research out there. So uh, must, a lot of people must be asking, okay, what is the difference between a DIY open source system then what are the closed loop systems that are coming out in the market? Well, one is cross compatibility. You can change your brand pairings. Currently in the Medtronic, you have to have a Medtronic pump. You need to have a Medtronic CGM. In my system, I'm using an Omnipod pump and I'm using a Dexcom CGM. So there is cross compatibility of brands. So you can choose the best of what you like and actually get the best of both worlds. Absolute flexibility. Now this is a pro and a con. There are no safety limits in a DIY system. I can set my target range as 70 to 80 if I want, but I know there'll be more chance of a hypo. No brand will actually come up and give you that kind of a safety like limit. The cost, uh, it's actually cheaper because your DIY components are very, very cheap. If I need to set up my Riley link, it's $150. That's it compared to what you would get from the market. And constant updates. Like I said, I'm constantly updating my loop. Every few months as an update that comes in. So I can just upgrade. This is a bit of what all the different things have. Again, I can share. You can take pictures of the slide if you want. But this is all the different kind of systems that are out there. The data, of course, is very, very promising. And this is the data conducted by Dana Lewis. And the mean BG and time and range improved in every time category for this study. And overall, uh, average blood glucose improved, HbA1c improved, and I can tell you from my own self that it all has improved as well. Just yesterday, in fact, Dana Lewis, she's a dear friend of mine. She's one of the initiators of looping. Uh, they published a, in the New England Journal of Medicine about you know, open source APS. So it's out there, it's coming, it's going. There are around 40,000 people currently in the world using this DIY system, so it's just gonna get better. We've also done a paper on this. So if you guys want to go and read that, please go check it out. We did an entire paper on my experience uh, of using looping in the country. And I can just say that this has truly changed my life. It has changed the way I think about diabetes. It has changed the way I live my life. It has made, like my last HbA1c was 5.7. I can just tell you that if that any indication of how good my control has been without hypos and without the constant up and downs. So. And lastly, if DIY is not for you, be patient because the future is bright. We have approved closed loop systems coming in the future. Will they be as flexible? Will I want to shift out of this kind of flexibility? Maybe not. But I would recommend all of you as physicians, if your patients with type 1 diabetes want to try looping, and if you are not able to understand the tech, please reach out to us because we'll be more than happy to help get them this kind of quality of life. Because the loop doesn't sleep so that people with diabetes can sleep. Thank you so much.